Hello Tube. In this video we're going to be taking a little look at the PowerBook T4. And as you can see, it sort of looks like it's in pieces. That's mostly because, uh, well, the top case uh, has been removed. So that's what it looks like. It's a little nice black shielding for the backlight. Let's put that aside. The star of this video is this, an SSD. No, not this one. This one. Yeah, that's it. This one has the right connector. Because this one, this is the SATA one. This will be going back in the Mac Pro. And this is an IDE one. It's not really an IDE SSD, this is an enclosure. There is an MSATA SSD inside of here. But we're not taking it apart because it's a freaking hassle to get this thing uh, screwed in. So. so there's that. We will be putting in that SSD in this PowerBook. Before we can do that, we still need to remove the existing hard drive. That's inside of here. There we go. Now it has this Hitachi Travel Star in there. First of all, we need to carefully remove the connector from the logic board. So it's quite a bit of an ordeal. We should not tear the ribbon cable. And I'm just assuming that this screwdriver will work on this format. It will not. Okay. Okay, this one will work, size zero Phillips, yeah that works nicely, nice and snug, just pick that up real quick, it's only held in by one screw in this case, so. well, now we should be able to pull up the mechanism or the thing that keeps it in place. It's being fiddling. Oh, there's actually still a screw in there. I thought they had one screw. Man, I keep forgetting. I, I mean, I, I double checked this hard drive when I was checking out the, uh, the broken speakers, or at least uh, what I thought was broken speakers. But uh, yeah, we should be able to just pick it up. Yep, and we can. All we need to do is uh, transplant this onto the new SSD. They're pretty close in terms of thickness, so, yep. That's actually bang on. It's just as thick, good. So now I just need to remove the, the screws from the hard drive. I should really not do this over the laptop itself. Again, I don't really care. Newer MacBooks always use Torx screws to secure the hard drive to the quote unquote caddy because it's not really caddy. It's just a piece of plastic. Probably just some shielding or something. Seriously, it just comes off like that. And then we need to sort of gently remove the ribbon cable from the drive. And there's our 44 pin connector. Very nice. Okay. One thing I noticed straight away is this hard drive is actually pretty heavy for what it is. It's just a 60 gigabyte, 5400 RPM drive, but you know. This is going back in storage. Yeah, the storage is going into storage, you know. Who gives a shit, right? Um, let's see if we can get this one lined up correctly. Is this thing keyed even? Yep, it is. I think it went in like this, so I should be able to put the connector on like so. Really? Freaking janky yellow tape cut in a way. Yep, it is keyed like this, so just put it on. Yep. Yeah, that's good to go. That's good to go. Yeah, I'm just going to leave the sticker on, I don't freaking care. Um, because we are totally swag yo, we just need to uh, get that one attached. Just the shape of this thing really proves to me that the previous owner was quite a bit rougher with this machine than was necessary. 
I don't know why he mistreated this thing so much when he yanked out his own hard drive. Just freaking use D-Ban, man. There's probably some version of it compiled for Linux that will run on PowerPC, so... And if not, just remove the drive or format it. I mean, I can be trusted sometimes. Really? Freaking Chinese adapters, man. The prices look so good, but they're so low quality. Wait, what did you what do you expect for a you know seven bucks? Anyways, I'm just going to uh, get all this put back together. I'll put the power book back together. Um, and then we'll be, uh, and I'll just install the operating system and take you through a tour of the speediness that we are pursuing here in this mission of equipping a PowerBook G4 with a SSD that is pretty much as fast as possible for a machine of this class. So I'm just going to do that and we'll be right back. All right, so the PowerBook has been freshly installed with a copy of Leopard. Well, the copy is not very fresh at all, actually. As you can see, I've got a bunch of programs on it. So, uh, I've been doing some testing in the past couple days, and the uh, system seems to be very responsive. Everything loads up just fine. Despite uh, Leopard not being the perfect operating system for a G4 by a long shot. I will also try uh, to use this SSD on Tiger. Got plenty of hard drive space, I'll just uh, make a second partition and uh, work from there. But yeah, as you can tell, it's just there we go. If we click find a window, it immediately opens. We can just browse through the operating system without a hitch. The graphics chipset is able to keep up just fine. Let's open up a browser. This is Leopard WebKit. There we go. Browser loaded. Not gonna bother loading web page because it's not necessarily uh, storage constraint. There we go, there's a mail. Opened up almost instantly. There's iTunes. Boom, loaded. I really couldn't do this on the original hard drive for sure. This is definitely way faster. Now the big uh, elephant in the room, which is Office 2008 for Mac, this runs notoriously poorly on uh, PowerPC Max, but as you can see it has loaded up. In my case, it doesn't load up with the sidebar because I have that disabled at the moment. Let's do the same with Excel. And there we go, Excel, we're all ready to use now. So as you can see, um, an SSD definitely makes a difference in an old machine like this. Well, you might think like, well, you're only using an IDE interface, it's like ATA 100, so you're only getting up to 100 megabytes per second read and writes. And uh, that is definitely true, but there are more things uh, that are important to look at uh, if you replace a hard drive with an SSD. You don't always get um, speed in the read-write department, necessarily. There are also very fast hard drives that can still be trumped by a SSD that is just as fast in theory. The main benefit you get with an SSD is faster access times. That means that it is able to uh, switch between its tasks for reading and writing much more efficiently. In a, in, in a, you know, in a standard platter hard drive, you have the, uh, the read-write head moving along, trying to find the correct sector with data. An SSD is basically just a flash chip. It's all electronically done. It can it can be done in absolutely freaking god speed or whatever it's, it's literally going at the speed of light you see it, uh, it kind of feels like that sometimes so yeah you can definitely tell that uh, it is a very worthwhile upgrade of course the main bottleneck of this system would still be the g4 processor because it's pretty slow but uh, these machines can be made a little bit more useful by just uh, adding an ssd there are different tasks that a machine like this can still do. For instance, this is the remote desktop connection client. This is a custom ver version written in uh, written for X11. 
Um, this uses a slightly newer client version than the uh, Office 2008 one uh, bundles, so you can connect uh, to the remote desktop protocol uh, to over, to, you know, like uh, take control of Windows machines. Um, that's pretty cool. You can control up to uh, pretty much Windows uh, Windows 8 and uh, Server 2012 machines with this. It doesn't seem to connect, want to connect to uh, uh, Server 2016 uh, machines, probably because there have been some uh, security enhancements done to the uh, remote desktop protocol in uh, that operating system. So yeah, what is what is there to show uh, other than uh, what I've already shown you here? The SSD is pretty darn fast. Just for the record, let's do a uh, boot up test and then we can wrap this video up. Let's shut it down first. And there we go, it's off. Now press the power button. It is now connected to my speakers, so that's why it's bonging through them. Because the onboard speakers are, of course, uh, stone dead. And there we go, there's the Apple logo. We're about 30 seconds in. Yep, that only took 40 seconds to boot up with an IDE interface on Mac OS X Leopard. The full version this is not a light optimized image or anything. This is actual full blown Leopard with 2 gigs of RAM and 1.67 gigahertz single core PowerPC G4. So, that concludes the video. I hope you all enjoyed this. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.